tonight's headlines, Nationalista Party backs BBM Sara Tandem. PDP is Zek hoping for Duterte's personal endorsement of Bongbong. Decreasing COVID-19 cases due to high vax rate. DOTR MRT3 to study extension of free train rides. Cloudy skies, scattered rains in Kalayan group of islands. Raptors upset Celtics. And Tugade prefers fuel subsidy for aviation sector. Good evening. Today is Tuesday, March 29, 2022. I'm Miguel Palatagon and this is Tribune News on Q. Here are the stories for this evening. Nationalista Party led by former Senate President Manny Villar on Tuesday announced it is endorsing the candidacies of presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbo Marcos Jr. and his running mate Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte. Villar said Marcos and Duterte's message of unity is crucial in binding our country together and inspiring our people as we rebuild not only from the pandemic but also from the political chasms that divides us. Villar's son, former Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar, is running for senator under the slate of the BBM Sara Unity. Meantime, Marcus Camp expressed gratitude to the Nationalista Party for the endorsement and according to the attorney Vic Rodriguez, Marcus spokesman, the party's endorsement would surely serve as another insurance to the bandwagon of support for the unity from political parties. PDP Laban Secretary General and Cabinet Secretary Melvin Matibag said he is hoping President Rodrigo Duterte will personally endorse presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. before the May 9 elections. This comes after senatorial candidate Salvador Panelo disclosed that Duterte will join PDP Laban's campaign rally in Cebu on March 31. The PDP Laban official said Duterte is expected to attend around 20 campaign rallies of the party. However, Matibag explained anew that while PDP Laban officially endorsed Marcus's presidential bid, it is up to Duterte, the party chairman, to directly endorse his preferred candidate for the presidency. The Department of Health, or DOH, said the declining number of new COVID-19 infections are brought about by the improved vaccination rate in the country and not because of a low testing rate. Health Under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere said they did expect that severe and critical cases would be low since at least 72% of the country's eligible population have already been fu fully vaccinated against COVID-19 as compared to the Delta surge in July to October 2021. The Philippines recorded a total of 2,726 new COVID-19 cases from March 21 to 27, lower by 24% percent than the previous week's tally and among new infections this week, none was tagged as severe or critical. Verjera also recognized that people might be resorting to using antigen home test kits, but said reports from their regional offices also indicate that they are not seeing any uptick in the infections. Tribune News on Kiel will be back after these reminders. Katribu, taranat makisa at matuto sa mga public service programs hatid ng kalingang katribu. Tuwing lunes, nandyan ang usapang business na magbibigay tips at inspirasyon sa mga aspiring entrepreneurs kasama si Vernon Velasco. Tuwing Berkoles, usapang pangkulusugan naman ang tatalakayin ni Miss Cory Quirino sa health and wellness. At tuwing Biyernes naman, kung legal advice ang kailangan mo, 
Sagot ka na ng Legal Diaries kasama si Elmer Navarro Manuel at mga guest lawyers. Lahat ng niya mapapanood tuwing alas 13.30 ng hapon sa Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube. In other news, the Department of Transportation or DOTR and the Metro Rail Transit Line 3 or MRT3 management will study if they should extend offering free rides beyond April 30. According to MRT3 OIC General Manager Mike Capati, the first day of the free rides was successful after serving a total of 281,507 passengers on Monday and that the MRT and DOTR management will study if they can extend the free rides to help commuters. Kapati said they are expecting 300,000 to 400,000 passengers daily while the free ride scheme is in effect from March 28 to April 30. By 2023, MRT3 will ship to a configuration of four-car trains and get rid of the three-car trains so that more passengers can be served according to Kapati. State Weather Bureau Pag-asa announced that cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms will prevail in parts of Kalayan Group of Islands due to the Low Pressure Area or LPA. The LPA was located at 235 kilometers west-northwest of Puerto Princesa City, Palawan or 295 kilometers east of Pag-asa Island, Kalayan, Palawan according to Weather Bureau. Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms caused by easter lies with possible flash floods or landslides during severe thunderstorms. Meanwhile, the wind speed forecast for northern Luzon will be moderate to strong moving east, while coastal water conditions will be moderate to rough. In sports, Pascal Siakam poured in 40 points as the Toronto Raptors snapped the Boston Celtics six-game win streak with a 115-112 overtime victory on Monday. Siakam and the Raptors took advantage of a depleted Celtics lineup to grab a crucial victory that boosts Toronto's hopes of securing an automatic postseason berth. The win moves Toronto level with the Chicago Bulls on 43 wins and 32 losses in the East. Just ahead of the Cleveland Cavaliers who are one place outside the automatic playoff spots in 7th. The Celtics have been the form team in the, N in the NBA recently, motoring to 11 wins in their last 12 games prior to Monday's clash. And in business, Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugadi said that he prefers to subsidize portions of airlines' fuel costs that to, than to improve the higher fuel shortage, which would be passed on to the air's traveling public amid the skyrocketing petroleum prices. He stressed that they want to avoid increasing the fuel surcharge because it will be passed on to passengers which then will increase cost of travel. Even before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the Civil Aeronautics Board or CAV had upgraded the fuel surcharge short charge rate for March 1 to April 30, 2022 period to level 4 after it considered that the price of jet fuel averaged 95.35 dollars per barrel for December 2021 to January 2022. Under a, level, under a level 4 of the fuel surcharge matrix, airlines may collect a fuel surcharge of 108 pesos to 411 pesos for domestic flights and 543 pesos to 5026 pesos for international flights. The transportation chief, meantime, said that the government will look into the possibility of providing subsidies for the aviation sector. That wraps up the stories tonight. Before we go, we would like to thank the SM Store, Araneta City, the Department of Tourism, MG Motors, Hina Motors, Security Bank, Empire East Lands Holdings Incorporated, and Overseas Committee Affairs Council member Alan Lin of the Republic of China for their continued support. Again, this is Miguel Pautagona, and you're watching Tribune News on Cube. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home.
Good night and God bless us all. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Oh, vaccination, isolation, gotta keep up with my nutrition, gotta maintain my body condition, then I can take my vaccination. What do I choose? What do I take? As long as it is not a fake. AstraZeneca, Moderna, BioNTech, even Sinovac, okay now. Vaccination for the nation, no more isolation. With vaccination. This public service advisory is brought to you by Daily Tribune and 100.3 RJFM. Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. Download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS and Google Play for Android to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune invites you to join its Viber community, Katribu, to get updates on the hottest news on politics, business, sports, lifestyle, and entertainment. Emoticons of the Tribune mascot, Tarsito, are available on our community Viber.